So welcome everybody to session one, um, which was, I think, um, again inspired by the introduction that um, the teacher gave us. Uh, lots of difficult questions, um, lots of stuff for discussion later on uh, in the morning. Um, so I do hope you're awake. Um, I understand that you were here yesterday already, um, maybe during the day, but certainly during the evening. There are some open spaces here, so some of us have enjoyed the evening tremendously, probably. <laughs> well, I admire you for being here. I thought I'd start off <clears throat> this morning um, with, um, with some examples from the library. Slow examples, fast examples. Um, I have um, titled my presentation Fast Forward. So already there's one part missing the slow part, and boy, do I recognize that. In Utrecht, we are in the middle of um, writing a new strategy for the next coming years. And, you know, we thought this year we would do it in a very thorough way. So the board of the university had asked us to, um, to put in a little insight about where we would be in 2020. Now, we didn't find that very, very interesting. You know, 2020, that's like tomorrow, right? So what we did was um, we made um, a little story about how a researcher would do her research in 2030. Um, of course, um, you, you cannot know what the future will bring, but we just extended some lines. The world is completely digital. The world is open access. Um, there is an integrated e uh, infrastructure. The ways that um, research is um, uh, assessed um, is completely different. The, 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 the times of the impact of the e-journal are completely gone. So we, we create a little story. And of course, what happens is that, you know, we are now discussing our, our strategy plan in the university and some of the researchers and some of the departments say, what is this? This is not the future. This will not be. You're going way too fast. Do you recognize that? So if you're talking, like, like teachers talks about, we need to know our users. We need to know our environment. What are the requirements? What do people need? What does research need? What does teaching need? It's, there's not just one answer. And it's, um, it's complicated. Um, I'd like to give you some examples of the things we have been doing in Utrecht over the last, let's say, 10 years. New projects, um, innovative stuff we've been doing. And then look at where did, was the library the driver? Where were our users or developments outside the libraries the driver? And what happened to those services? What, what's happening to the way we, um, we support services or we support the university um, uh, in terms of how we did that? So I'd like to start with this. When we, um, when we started our conversation for our new strategy in Utrecht, the first thing we did was uh, use scenario planning. Are you familiar with scenario planning? Most of you are. Well, it's like, you know, you ask a bunch of outsiders to talk about the future. And you take that future and then and think about, okay, if this is the future, how do I behave? So we did that. And interestingly enough, um, most of the people, almost nobody was a librarian, of course. We made sure that we had real outsiders. All talked about the scholarly communication cycle. That is the focus point of libraries. Of course, we also have study spaces, right? We also have buildings. We're also the place to be, more than ever in this digital age. But this is really our core business. Um, you, you might not be able to read it, but you, you, can, you can all um, um, t t talk about this. Um, you know all this by heart, I think. If, if I wake you up in the middle of the night, <laughs> You'll be able to talk about this. So the library, of course, used to be at the end sort of, of the communication cycle in terms of distribution of knowledge, distribution of the publications. Of course, we're moving 
um, uh, nowadays to provide services that are, uh, are geared towards much more of the, the cycle of the communication, scholarly communication. So we're, I'm sure we're all looking at playing a role with data. Um, I'm sure that um, we're all looking at how we can support researchers in their publishing activities. In Utrecht, we have a publishing services for open access journals. You might not all have that, but in one way or another, I'm sure you help researchers um, with finding uh, open access journals or ways to, to, to publish. Um, digital preservation is something that we're working on. Interestingly enough, of course, this is something that we do together. We do it maybe in our own country, digital preservation. We're not, we're not building another closed stacks like we have here in Europe, uh, a digital closed stack for, for the um, digital content of, of the collection of one library anymore. We do it in collaboration. Um, maybe it's a silo, like, like Tietje says, but we're not doing it by ourselves. We do it either nationally or globally. I don't think at this point in time there's a European solution, by the way. Is there? Anybody aware of that? No. Okay, I'm still up to date. Um, um, in the dissemination of um, publication, of scholarly content, of go go the Googles of the world are now um, uh, play an important part, and I'm so bold as to um, um, propose that this will happen. Now, you might not agree with me, but um, in the dissemination, in the discovery of scholarly content, I think we libraries play a minor role in the future, maybe no role at all. Well, so these are the changes that are happening. What have we, we, what have we been doing in Utrecht? Um, we built an, uh, an open access repository, I'm sure you all have that, so that's not very exciting. Publishing services, in Utrecht we have an OGS um, platform and we have 20 open access journals where we support um, editors and, and boards to publish their own journal. We are not a publisher, I keep saying, we do not uh, organize peer review, the, um, uh, the researchers do that themselves, so it's, it's basically facilitating. Um, in 2006, we built our local uh, search engine for journal articles. So it's like, a, like an OPAC, but then for, for journals. It was very successful. Um, we built virtual research environments on, um, 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 on a, a local basis. So we said to the researchers if, researchers, if you are a research group and you want to collaborate, we have the perfect solution for you and it's very safe. And you can also um, work together, collaborate with researchers in other universities. We'll provide the accounts, we'll do all of that. The VREs. Who of you also um, have VREs for your research groups? Amsterdam, any other? Over there, there, yeah. So you're, you're, you might be familiar with it. Well, this is an interesting case, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, in Utrecht, we built our own Dataverse installation. Uh, the Harvard software, open source software, we built our own um, one in 2010. We have an interesting um, project going on with one of the research groups within the digital humanities. Um, and it's called Annotated Books Online. It's actually a collaboration, an international collaboration um, in the US, uh, the Netherlands, and I believe the UK too. This is a group that studies within the humanities, that studies books that have been written in. You know those books we, don't, we librarians do not like. <laughs> It's sort of the graffiti within, uh, within books. Well, they study them because some of those annotations, of course, are very interesting in hindsight. Um, and what they do is um, the research group has a, uh, built an infrastructure, or had a couple of students building an infrastructure where they could annotate those annotations. So you have a digitized document and you have comments, so to speak, added to particular parts of the document. And it's a very nice installation. And this research group said, 
we have this, we built this, but now the students are gone, we don't know what to do with it, no IT department wants to have it because it complies to no IT standard at all. <laughs> Would you take care of it? Would you host it for us? And we did, because we thought this is interesting. We might learn something from this. And then what we did last year was um, we um, um, uh, gave a, a digitized collection for a Claria, which is a, uh, a project uh, which you will hear about later on. I'm, not, I'm sure. So the other thing that we did, and this is in line with my earlier comment, um, we discontinued local discovery systems, so the local search engine for scientific journals, we stopped that last year. Um, I am a strong believer in that innovation is also stopping to do things, not just starting, but also stopping. So this is gone now. Um, in terms of push and pull, you know, my presentation is keeping up with the re changes in research, but it could also be the other way around because sometimes we think of things, we just do them. You know, if we build it, will they use it? That's kind of stuff. So what is push? If you look at the list, open access repository, I don't think there was a request by researchers for us to do that. Um, if researchers needed that, they built it themselves, like Los Alamos. Um, publishing services for open access journals, we just started that and see if people would use it. Virtual research environments, we just built it. Um, in 2006, we thought we would by now have like 200 of those f in use by let, let's say 200 research groups. Uh, we built it so that it would be scalable. We now have 25. So, <laughs> we built it, will they use it? What's wrong with it? Um, I would be interesting, it would be interested to talk with colleagues who have those kinds of services to see what's happening. Um, one of the things that uh, we need to evaluate is um, why, of course, we have only 25 instead of even 100 or 200. It might be, of course, that you know, it's, we're eight years later, so there's new technology, there's other ways to do stuff. Things, services might not last as long as we thought. We built it for the future. Like, you know, libraries used to build everything or do everything for eternity, right? We have to sort of scale back. So, um, in terms of pull, I talked about the annotated books online. This was a request um, from a research group. Um, uh, Caleria asked us for digitized collections and the Utrecht Data First Network. Well, that was interesting. We, we, we did that because some researchers asked us, we've got this data set and it's on my stick, it's on my flash drive, where do I go? I want to keep it safe and I want to keep it safe even while I'm still doing research, not only afterwards when it can go to dance, <laughs> but before that. So we, we did that, we made an installation. After that, other universities and other um, research um, institutions said, oh, that's interesting. Um, our researchers might need that, but we won't use our own installation. We can use yours. So we ended up last year with seven universities using it. So now we gave it to Duns because we thought, now it's a Dutch Dataverse network. <laughs> it's not the role of the library to um, maintain a service like that um, in a server uh, in our corridor, literally. <laughs> So we, uh, it transformed. So this is also an example, a very small example of how infrastructures change. It's not something that you do by yourself on a server in your own corridor, but things become national uh, and things become international. So what scale, what is the scale um, of the infrastructure that you use for services? It changes all the time. What is happening, I think, is that, like in the rest of the world, the scale becomes bigger. Um, we, this is an interesting one. I said that we, um, uh, we discontinued our, our search engine. You could think that's a push, because we decided to do that. And, and we were very curious to see how our, um, um, uh, our user group would, um, would respond to that. On the other hand, I would argue that this is typically a pull thing. 
because, like I'm sure you're all aware, the first um, uh, um, user study, I think, done, well, maybe not the first, but the first that I'm at the moment aware of, that OCLC did in 2003, already said that users are using other ways to discover um, um, uh, scientific content than through the OPEC or, or websites of libraries. So in Utrecht, we think, you know, we did this. This is a pool thing because we look around us and see what the users are doing and saying, okay, we, we have to react to what we see that is happening in the world. Of course, when you take out a search engine, you have to look at, okay, what is my own user group? How do they respond? So push and pull um, is not so easy to, um, uh, to define. New kids on the block. Uh, linked to open data, because we don't want silos, of course, we want things linked. Um, annotated digital collection, we can use the installation of the research group of annotated books online, maybe to do something with our special collections, to show annotations. We think that is an opportunity. Um, we have questions coming to the library about repository for courseware. If we're going to do online learning, we're going to think, where are we going to uh, store our stuff? And um, uh, we, oh, we do it in Blackboard, but it's a chaos. Can the library help, please? Um, rights management, very complicated in the digital world. We need to assume a role. We're not sure what role exactly uh, at this point in time, I must say. Another thing. So fast forward. Innovations start small. They start in your own garage, so to speak, many times. It might be a question of one or two people, and then it grows bigger, or it dies, maybe, after a few years. Um, some grow up and be an adult in the international world, and some have a very short life cycle. This is unusual for us to deal with, but I'm sure that's fact of life nowadays. What is, I think, um, the core is that we have to be embedded. Um, it's an old term by now, maybe. It's been around for a couple of years, but still it is very important. We need to be in the workflows of our students, our teachers, and our researchers. If we're not, we're going to lose our contact, and we're going to lose the process <laughs> to really support our users. If we don't know what they're doing, if we're not there in the middle, we're not going to be able to help them. So this is very important. In our new strategy plan in Utrecht, we state in our mission that we do, we collaborate in everything that we do. There is almost nothing that we do by ourselves anymore. And that has also to do with scale. Um, that's a short introduction to our, um, to our theme this morning. Um, we have three speakers. Um, until our break at 10.50, um, as you have seen, and we're going to learn much more about digital humanities and changes that are going on in research and other perspectives, and I'm very much looking forward to that. I'd like to, do, to introduce Ricky as the next speaker this morning. Thank you very much.